Renegades. My name is Terry, and I'm so glad you're able to join me today for this fantastic little workshop called Bling Out Your Board Games. And this is this is a really fun one for me. Um, in case you aren't familiar, this is your first time seeing me. My name is Terry Latorco. I am one of the folks here at Renegade Game Studios, and I'm also a a hobbyist. I'm a miniature painter, and I'm the kind of person who likes to personalize my board games. So this is what this workshop is about. And I wanted to show you some stuff today that even if you're not someone who is interested in working with miniatures, painting miniatures, or, or is maybe interested in wanting to try what, try some stuff out, but want a really easy way to get into it, that's what we're gonna show off today. If you are watching on Twitch right now, I am watching chat, so if you have any questions about anything at all, uh, just throw it in the chat and I will try my best to answer your questions. I'm gonna talk really quickly today about what we're gonna cover. Um, we don't have a lot of time, but I wanna be able to show you some really exciting things. And um, I've got a few little projects that are, are really nice little, little upgrades to the games that you have. Um, I wanna say hi to it looks like Panda Angel, Amanda Panda, hello. Thanks for tuning in in Twitch. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna use two games to kind of showcase some stuff uh, in terms of upgrading and, and, and you know, leveling up your, and personalizing your board games. Um, and specifically, these are techniques that are, I'm using on two games that are available for pre-order right now, coming up very soon. Viscounts of the West Kingdom, very popular, and Athenaeum Mystic Library, which is probably one of the prettiest games um, in terms of components I've seen, and really delightful. And I really wanted to, to work on those games, but these are techniques you can apply to all sorts of board games, so don't be afraid of that. I also wanted to mention, and this is something that I feel isn't necessarily talked about when we talk about like crafters and hobbyists in the tabletop gaming space as much. Um, and that is uh, color vision deficiency or colorblind accessibility. Renegade Game Studios, all of our games are when we do the visual and graphic design of those games, they're thoughtfully designed to be accessible. Um, and I wanted to showcase some techniques that if you have color vision deficiency and, and you know, painting miniatures might be a struggle or might, might feel a little out there. These are techniques you can do as well. You can upgrade your games without, without feeling like um, that, that, that color, color vision deficiency is, is impeding, impeding you from partaking in the hobby of, of like doing, doing this sort of crafting. Because it's really fun and it's a nice way to actually um, get a little more value, get a little more enjoyment out from your your board games. I think that that's something, especially these days, um, I've seen more painters come around. Uh, if you're playing like Power Rangers, Heroes of the Grid, more people are starting to paint those those miniatures up um, because, you know, they can't necessarily get together and, and enjoy them with their groups. Um, but when you when you craft with your miniature, with your board games, you can actually do that. So I'm going to show you a few things here. I'm going to adjust the focus just to just to show off what we are doing. But first off, I have some, this is this is the bit that I, I like to call upgrading your, your punch out tokens. Now, most mini, uh, most board gamers, um, you know, they might be sleevers, they might be card sleever, uh, non card sleevers of their games, um, but they've heard of card sleeve. This is the punch out token equivalent of sleeving your tokens. This is a little um, treatment on cardboard tokens that makes them feel a little bit more like plastic. Um, so what I have done here, let me grab, let me grab one of them here, this one here. So what this is, this is the, uh, these are little tokens from Athena Mystic Library. So these are cardboard punch tokens. And what I did was I uh, did a, a treatment on top to, you can kind of see the difference in the finish. It kind of laminates them, it's like sleeving them. Um, but it gives them a plastic like layer of coating on top. And if you, you can actually add this and make it thicker so it actually feels like a bevel 
And when you finish this token, the way I'm going to show you how to finish them uh, as well. So I'm going to show you how to, to put this layer on. I'm also going to show you how to finish it. So when you finish it, it actually looks a little bit like a plastic token. Because what we're going to do is we're going to apply a product onto each of the pieces. And then we're going to finish up the edges so they look like plastic tokens. And they have the weight of the plastic tokens because of the, the uh, product we're going to put on the tops of them. So that's that's the first thing we're going to cover today. We're also going to talk about upgrading your little character meeples. I love personalizing my character meeples. I think they're really fun, really easy to do. Um, and what ends up happening is, what I do is I just take Sharpies to them. It's really fun to doodle on your character minis, uh, meeples. And, and you don't need to buy special equipment or paint or anything like this. You can just take some Sharpies and and you know give them a little bit of of a touch and make them a little more characterful so this black meeple you know the cutouts are really nice too and I, I think that's something that um is really fun about a lot of our games when you have character meeples this is uh, the same for the clink adventuring party where there's like all these little adorable meeples the boss tokens as well uh those meeples even just taking one color of Sharpie and just adding like buttons or shoes or a little hat can just make them level up just a little bit and makes them a little more personal. Um, Amanda's asking, does the glossy finish cause more glare? Um, not when you're playing them, not when they're flat, because I, I'm really thoughtful of that. The other thing you can do is there are uh, finishes that you can actually brush on top of this, matte coats if you really don't want the glare and you still want to have that protective layer, you want to have that, that plasticky finish, um, you can actually brush them on with a, a little bit of matte product. And I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about that too, um, because I also have this rondel, this plastic rondel from Black Hands of West Kingdom. So we're going to do meatballs. We're going to do cardboard sleeving, I guess. Um, but like, uh, plastic finishes on, on the cardboard tokens. And we're going to do this. So this is the, the center rondel plus, it's a plus rondel for Viscounts. And what I'm going to show you is how to take this plastic and kind of give it a finish so it looks like stone. Um, and again, this is something that you can do if you're, you have um, color vision deficiency, if you're colorblind. This is a really easy technique. You don't need to have like tiny brushes or anything. A little bit of paint some really basic techniques. You don't even need fancy brushes for this. I'm using makeup brushes today. Dollar store makeup brushes um, to, to do this up on. You can use craft store paint, dollar store paint. Um, really easy to do. And just finish this so it doesn't just look plain plasticky. You can actually do something more with this. So these are the three things we're gonna cover today. Um, so let's start off with the, I'm gonna start off with the meeples first. Um, cause they're pretty straightforward. This is not like a super hard technique. I am all about personalizing my meeples and I think it's really fun. Let me turn on the focus here. Ooh, that focus is weird. There you go. Um, I'm all about, uh, personalizing meeples. I think that this is one of the fun ways to also, if you have younger gamers, 10, like read the age of the, the game. Um, but if you're, you're interested in, in kind of getting kids invested in the character they're playing. If you know someone in your household or someone in your gaming group, they always play red. This is their character. This, there's little things you can do to, to add a little more um, fanciness to them. And so simply put, I, I'll just take a, a meeple. This is painted already. The finish is already there. You don't need to do any treatments to this for the pigment to adhere to the meeple because it's already got like a base coat of paint. If you want to do it with paint, you absolutely can. Um, but I mean, you know, everyone has Sharpies. You can go to the dollar store and get like permanent markers, uh, get a fine one. A fine one's nice, like a nice fine black one. Um, or you can get all these colorful ones if you want. Um, but adding a little bit of detail to them is something that, that you can do. Buttons, shirts, shoes, you don't have to paint faces or do anything fancy. So I'm going to take a, let me see if I have like my big old black one. I got a big one here. I also have a couple of size of Sharpies, um, just because it's easier to do like the shoes. 
So I'm going to do the shoes right here. Let me fix the focus here so you can see a little closer. I'm going to do shoes on this meeple, just like this. Book, book, book. And I like to start small and kind of go a little bigger. And I try to find the shape of the shoe. And if it's not perfect, that's fine. These are, these are like little personalizations. Nobody knows where the pants end. Nobody knows where the shoes end. You can, you can go as far or as, as little as you want. Nothing has to be um, perfect. You don't need to feel pressure when you do this. This is really just a way to, to, to dress up the stuff you have in your collection. Things that you love, things that you just, you're like, oh, this, I can make this special to me. Um, and that's what I really want to encourage you to do. So, uh, does it take a lot of pressure or anything for the Sharpie to stick is what uh, Kevlar Khan is asking on Twitch. No, I'm barely touching the miniature or the meeple here. I'm just like tapping the paint, uh, the, the Sharpie, barely contacting. Um, there is a little bit of solvent in the Sharpies that uh, kind of dissolves a little bit to the paint. So the Sharpie actually sticks to the paint. One thing you should watch with these sh these um, smaller pens though, is you want to give them a wipe on some paper towel after or between strokes. Like you'll do like a little bit of shirt detail or a little bit of um, lines. Sometimes that solvent can eat into the paint a little bit, make it dissolve and then it'll stick and cling to the tip. So give that a wipe off so it doesn't dry on there and it keeps your, your little Sharpies working. Um, so let's see here, what did I do? I did a shirt collar, I did a shirt sleeve, and I did some some buttons, and it was pretty straightforward. I didn't even keep the lines very straight because I was like, oh, he's got like a bit of a ruffly shirt. So I'm just gonna throw on some little collar here, just a little little collar. And and this doesn't have to be anything. Like you can go a little fun, a little crazy. It's kind of like doodling on, um, yeah, it's kind of like doodling on on paper here. So I'm gonna just do a little collar here, a little, a little floofy collar. I'm gonna outline the bottom of his shirt and just go, Wah. again, I'm, I made it like a floofy kind of ruffly shirt at the bottom here. So I'm not totally doing anything too crazy. Just a little bit of a squiggly line. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm just gonna do little line slightly off of center down the middle and then I can do some buttons if I want to add a little bit of buttony goodness here just the hint it's a lot like miniature painting in that you're just painting uh, you're just drawing and doodling on little details that you think make you happy they don't have to be perfect they don't have to be anything other than something that makes you smile and that's all Right, if I wanted to add a little more definition on this side here, I added a little bit more green Sharpie to it just to add a little more definition to the shirt. But that's it, shoes, shirt. Very simple, very easy way to, to make what you have in your collection a little more fun and personal for you. Uh, this one here was done with silver Sharpie. I'll show you real quick again. Um, I, these ones here, I drew like a little dress down the middle, like a split front dress. Uh, to, to make it look like there were layers of clothes and a couple buttons. Buttons are really fun, just little dots. Uh, and I did the hat and the shoes. Um, but really, it's about what details you want to pick out. So this one, I was like, oh, that hat is pretty cool. So I'll stick that one out. Um, and and little, little shoulder, you know, coverings and boots. And then the buttons down the front. Very straightforward, very simple. Um, and where these lines end, where these colors end, like you can see, I'm just, you know, touching them up, just straightforward. I'm putting that, that Sharpie on, um, nothing too stressful. Uh, Kevlar Kevin's saying, I had no idea details, uh, meeples could get so detailed. It's one of the things that's really fun. Um, in part of the design of, of the, these meeples, one of the reasons why Renegade, we, we, we like to make really beautiful, unique meeples. That's one of the, the hallmarks of a Renegade game. Um, and it also helps people with color vision deficiency. So if if meeples are similarly colored, but they're differently shaped, it can be a, a helpful thing for them too. So, uh, and again, this isn't like, you know, you don't need to see color to put some silver onto a black meeple. Um, that gradient is there already. And then I just, you know, did the silver on the shoulders here, and then just some buttons down the front. Just a little touch there, maybe one here. 
Maybe one here, maybe one here, maybe one here. Bum, bum. All done. So there we go. Uh, chaotic platypus. Very cool. Without inspirations like this, I generally stare blankly at my meatballs and will only come up with adding googly eyes. Oh, that's fun too. Like, um, with I, I like to look at the meeple and go, okay, what would I imagine them wearing? What what what, what could be a fun little doodle I can I can do with it? If you really want to like figure that out, you can also just trace them onto some paper and take a, uh, some coloring pencils and like figure out with the shape what where you want to do some outlines on because this is something that you can do. You can just put the meeple down, trace around it, and then work with what's what the shape is and, and play with that. So that's the meeples. Now let's get to leaving our cardboard tokens. Um, this is going to be a really fun one. Um, so just so I also did this here. Uh, I, I like to call them gems because when you get to in Athenaeum, they have these spider tokens. I hope nobody is is arachnophobic um, watching this right now. They have these little spider tokens. They are kind of small. Um, and what happens is I find that it makes adding this gem layer because of the bevel edge it makes it a little easier to handle and and when you put the bevel edge on or when you put this layer on them again this is a product that is water resistant as well so if you do both sides of the token um it just helps it gives you one more layer of protection you can actually wipe these down as well with like a little damp paper towel if there's some guff on them, uh, Cheeto dust or whatnot, whatever. I have, I have no judgment. I have a child I play games with. So there's all sorts of stuff that happens to my tokens. Um, and so, so when you give them this treatment, it actually protects them. And so I'm going to show you what this is. This is Liquitex pouring medium. Uh, you can get this at big box arts and craft stores. You can also find this at, uh, or something, uh, similar. You can find a uh, pouring medium in a similar brand to I think Golden makes one uh, at fine art stores, but this is a very straightforward product. It's art, art product. It gives you a very straightforward um, benefits list of what you should do and how you should and should not treat this. Um, and this is this is a big bottle. It's not crazy expensive. You know, when I look at when I look at doing this treatment on my tokens, you know, a bottle of this is probably what it would cost me to sleeve in a game with like high quality sleeves. So it's comparable, um, but it does make these, these tokens last a little bit longer. So it's, a, it's, it's a functional treatment as well as an aesthetic one. So it's like, like when people use custom card sleeves to, um, to add art to the back of their cards. So there's also that benefit as well. And I'm going to show you how, how different you can get with it. So I have, this one here and I have one here so depending on the how thick you pour your medium this is pretty thin here so this is a pretty thin pour this one is a little bit thicker and it has a bit more bevel on it um, but the the surface tension of the um, of the token is is, or of the pouring medium is such that it kind of bevels naturally and you don't have to do a lot of work to get that um, and it's still pretty thin like when I actually stack them you can see how thin it is but it's still there whereas if I do it on the side I didn't treat with it you can see the difference so it kind of elevates these tokens off the table when you're playing with them um, Amanda did ask about glare too in terms of like playing with it play your game first before you do any sorts of treatments to them because it gives you a better sense of what you need to see and what you don't need to see. I like it on these these particular tokens for uh, Athenaeum because you can still read the the titles of the books, but that's a that's kind of like flavor text on the game itself. It's more like flavor text and less game impacting. Um, if you're finding that like there's really small details, you might be using a different kind of uh, a different game where the punch tokens actually have like different details and you, you need to be able to see those at a glance and they're kind of small, you know, take a look at it. But honestly, this treatment is when, when these things are placed flat, you can read them quite clearly. The glare, it's not like, it's not as heavy as a glare because these are so small. These are much smaller. Um, and again, it's a cause it's, it's much more, the, the content that is on these tokens is a little more flavor text rather than game impacting. The color matters more, and you'll be able to read that um, anywhere on the table. 
So, um, I did also want to say the one thing that I did on this before we get too far in, this is like an optional, like bonus bling um, suggestion is on, on these Athenaeum double-sided tokens here. There's this little candle thing. And so I did, if you actually look at the light there, there's a little bit of like sparkle in the flame. This is something that I did. I just want to mention it. If you're if you're into, mi into miniature painting or you want to experiment with something else from the art store while you're there grabbing your pouring medium. This is a really fun product. This is called Interference Paint. Uh, it comes in different colors as well. And this is a, a green, this is a gold. I use the gold on the flame to give it a little bit of sparkle. And I use this to highlight golds as well. Um, this is a product that depending on the direction of the light, um, they have these stripes painted on the label and they pour the they, they take a swipe of the product and they pour it across. Um, but depending on the light, it reads either see-through or gold. And so it it is it is slightly transparent, so you can actually see what's underneath these black and white stripes. Um, but it, it gives you a little bit of extra oomph. So I took just a couple swipes of that on, on a brush. I did a few, a little, 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 just a little bit of bling on the gold before I put the pouring medium on it. So that's a little extra tip for you um, if you're heading into the art store. Um, and Kevin is asking, the interference paint works well with other acrylic paints for minis. Yes, I use this interference gold as well to highlight my golds um, because it's super bright as a finishing gold. Um, I use these products as miniature paints as well. So you can dry brush with them. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with it. It's a really fun product to experiment with. That's for sure. Um, but let's actually get to pouring. So when it comes to pouring, uh, one thing you want to do is you want to kind of prepare your area, prepare your surface, uh, because um, you want to have, first of all, a level surface or some sort of tray underneath whatever you're going to be applying this to. And I like to try to set it out on something that I know is going to be still for a little while because it takes a little while to dry. So when I did both sides of this token, I did one side, I let it dry, and then I did the other side. Um, and that takes a little bit of time, so be thoughtful of that. And you, because this is like a, 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 a liquid, you can kind of see in the bottle it, it pours out. Um, and you'll see it when I apply it. Because it it is a liquid, um, if you have your, your tokens on a, a slant, in a tray or you leave it to set up on a slant, one side of your token will be a little bit uh, heavier with the product than the other. So you want to keep it on a level surface. Um, it's always a good idea to have like some paper towels and some water around. This is a water soluble product until it's dry and then it basically dries into plastic. So um, crafting is a messy thing. Having like something to protect the, the work surface you, you have, like some paper uh, or like a tablecloth, always a good idea. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna take some toothpicks. And I like to work with toothpicks because they're cheap and they're plentiful and it's easy to, to, to do. And I'm just going to, I'll take a smaller, narrower one as well. And I'm gonna take one of these spider tokens too, just so you can see how it works. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. Now, when you get this product, don't shake it. This is a really important thing because what happens is it traps air bubbles in the product. And then it those air bubbles are in your in your medium and they dry there and then it actually affects the legibility of what's underneath. So you want to, if possible, not shake it, let it set and sit for a, a, a little while. You don't need to shake this product, it's a homogenous product. So and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just, let's see if I can get a camera shot of this. I can lift it up. I feel, I let's, let's be, let's be, let's play dangerously. And so I'm just gonna put a few drops on the middle of it. There we go. And it's like, that's it. That's like four drops out of the bottle here. And so like this bottle comes in an eight ounce bottle. I think they sell it in larger quantities. Probably don't need them <laughs> for a board game. Um, you'll be able to do quite a bit with eight ounces. And I'm just going to tilt this and it will be milky until it is fully cured at we in which case it turns transparent. Uh, and that can take some time. You have to be patient with this product a little bit uh, because of the fact that um, 
it isn't just uh, it isn't just drying out. It, there's a chemical pr uh, process that goes through it. So if you keep it somewhere warm, um, the that chemical process goes through and it turns the liquid into a, like a solid plastic. Now what I'm going to do is I kind of spread it around by tilting this. Again, the viscosity of this product is such that like you can kind of tilt it and move it around like this. And I'm going to just take the toothpick and kind of spread it out a little bit. Now, you can play with this a little bit and experiment and see how thick you can get it, if you how thick you like to get it. Um, but it's really just a matter of making sure it hits all the edges. And if I need just maybe a drop more, I'm going to throw a drop more in there, bonk, just to make it a little bit easier for me to spread out and hit all the corners. And that was like four or five drops on this one token you're going to get so much out of this one bottle, so much out of this one bottle. So, and what that does is you'll, it'll be milky until it dries out. Now this, depending on how arid it is, depending on how warm it is, depending on how, um, how thick you apply this, I'm just add one more drop because I want a little bit of a bevel on this product or on this token. And I want to be able to spread it to the edge. The one thing you want to do is you'll notice here, you can kind of see whether or not it has bubbles in it, which is a good thing. Um, cause the, the toothpick also helps you like poke them out and move them around. So they, they aren't a bubble anymore. And it's just a matter of pushing them out to the corner. Make sure you get them to the edges. If you want to have a nice smooth finish on this. And if you're finding that it's like got this little clingy bit, on the edges because the edges are always the trickiest part um, this product will shrink a little bit as it dries as it as it sets up um, so it, it will pull away from the edges just slightly and that's why I want to make sure I try to get all the way to the edges and it's a nice smooth line because when it pulls out dry and if it's not if it's not there isn't enough product on there it will shrink down and it'll have like the bevel will not be as nice but it still doesn't ruin the token and it you still you still get the benefit of the protective layer on it. It's just not as thick. And so it's that's purely an aesthetic choice for me. That's a cosmetic um, choice I'm making when I apply this. And there you go. It's a little bit milky right now, but it will dry. It will dry and it will be crystal clear when it does. So that's the larger token. Um, we can do this, the smaller token here. Um, let's throw a couple drops on here. And again, like one of the reasons why you want to keep like some paper towel around or something to clean up is just, just for the sake of like keeping things tidy. So I'm going to, it's a little bit of drippage there. Give it a wipe. Um, makes it easier for the bottle to close afterwards if you don't have product build up. Um, and just keep things tidy as you go. So. A little bit of uh, a damp paper towel will help with that. You can use, um, or a little bit of water and some paper towel around. Always handy to have whenever you're crafting. So we're gonna put some drops here. One, two. I'm gonna do four drops, maybe three drops across. I'll go four drops across the top edge. I like the bevel on these. I like having a little bit thicker token um, layer on, and and then. Once that's done, that's nice and dry. It'll dry out. Um, I've had sometimes, and I'm going to show you on one of these spider tokens that I did. Um, I like to, once the first layer is dry, if I'm not really happy with the bevel on it, I'll add another layer on and, and I'll thicken it up. So for the spider tokens, one of the things I want to do is, is I wanted them to have like a, a very obvious like dome to it. Uh, almost like, you know, the, almost as if the spider was cast in amber. Uh, I'm going to add just a, one more drop over here. Boop. There we go. It makes spreading so much easier. It does take a little longer to dry, but I'm patient. Um, and again, this can take as little as, you know, 12 hours. Uh, I like to leave them overnight just to check on them afterwards in the morning and see how they're, they are. And then if they look good, I'll flip them over. If they're clear, uh, give them like the soft touch tap. Make sure they're, they're dry, they're not tacky. Um, Cause sometimes they'll go clear before they're fully cured. Um, so give them a little, just a little touch tap. 
gentle pressure because you don't want to leave your fingerprint into the layer but if, even if you do you can just put another layer on top and it just fills it all in um, and then let me move this around a little bit get it all the way on the edges and that is the book nice and nice and done up it's a little bit milky and it will stay milky until it's it's cured up a little bit but so here's here's the thing with the spider one um, if you want to do both layers and you want to have one domed layer and one flat layer do the thinner layer first because it will dry first and then come in on the other side and then add a drop two drops spread it out let it set you can then once it's set up and become clear put on a third layer now I did this 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 additional layer so it's a little bit milky still but you can see I can kind of touch it let me change the focus here so you can see a little closer this is a little bit milky still it will clear up uh, I just need to give it a little bit of time I want to push too hard on this because it's still liquid underside and it will it will spread and get weird and it'll end up with a different texture but I still have that really nice dome on top um, I like to keep one side flat since I'll use it as a functional gem but the other side having that dome is is something that's really nice for me for these smaller tokens um, so I put another layer of this um, I'd say about six hours ago uh, and it's set up because it's a smallish amount but it hasn't cured fully on that bottom side uh, just under that top layer and so I'm just gonna let it wait it should clear up over time uh, here we go and that's that's all it is so that's the first step so you do that on both sides you're gonna let that dry flip them over do your second layer of pouring medium and then, once that's done, I will t I, I take a, um, so you'll see that the cardboard edge is, is you know, uh, it looks like punch board. <laughs> so I just take a Sharpie and I finish the edges. A little bit of Sharpie. Um, I use silver, you can use whatever color you want. I like the metallic ones because they feel a little... I feel a little special but you can do it to match the game as well and finishing your tokens like this um, with a little bit of silver sharpie uh, if you want to clear off that with an exacto knife like for the punch board contact points um, you can too I don't go that crazy I'm not interested in doing that but taking a little bit of silver sharpie and taking it onto the edges of the of the token makes it look just a little bit more finished and it helps uniform out the color of the token and it it looks more plastic it looks like a more upgraded element because it's it looks like it's solid through it's not just punch board um and that's a little thing you can do even if you don't even if you don't do the pouring treatment on them if you take a little bit of Sharpie and finish off the edges of your, your cardboard tokens as a whole, it still looks really nice. Um, and you can do the Sharpie bit before you do the pouring medium or after. So if even if you're just at, you know at a, at a point where you're just like, oh, I've got a character's going to hang out. Maybe I want to bling out some things. While you're doing your character minis, you got your, your Sharpie out. Do the edges of your tokens. It's really fun. It's just a light thing you can do just to, to dress up your components a little bit. Um, you know, I'm going to do the small spider real quick, just so that you can kind of see how little you need. Um, so I'm going to just do like two drops on this spider here. Maybe one if I want to keep it flat, two if I want to have that dome on top. So that's one drop. Covers most of it. All you need to do is move it around with the toothpick. And the, the surface tension makes it really easy to, to let it dry. But because this is so small and I only use one drop and this thing had like maybe six this one had maybe five this has one this dome will already be a little more prominent but it will shrink down so don't be afraid when you see it on the on your little crafting table oh my gosh this is a lot um, it will shrink down and it will clear up just you know give it some time and let be patient so I'm gonna move oops I'm gonna move these off I'll give that a wipe there I'm gonna move these off and then, is it too much? Is it possible to use too much at a point where it, it won't be transparent when it dries? Okay, so that's a very good question, Kevlar Khan. Um, when you paint a miniature, you'll hear a lot of people say, you know, just do thin layers and do more, more of them. It's better than one thick layer. Always, always. 
that's true of any product you're going to use. You can always add another layer and even stuff out if you add too much. Now I have done it where I've just, I have poured a thick layer onto a kind of a larger piece and I wanted it to be pretty beveled. Um, it took like, it took about three weeks to fully cure. Um, and you can kind of, once the top is a little set a little bit, if you really want to try to push it, um, you can take it, a, a like a low hair dryer to it and kind of help it clear out a little bit, but you do, you usually just want to give it time and eventually it will clear up. It will, you just need, you, you, you want to give it some heat because that helps catalyze the, the chemical reaction in, in it, especially when that top layer is already cured. Um, a little bit of heat will help with that. So that's where the hair dryer comes in, but like time, it will cure over time and it will set up to be clear. I've never had that experience. You know, if you shake it, if you shake this product and there are really fine air bubbles in it, um, that you weren't able to pick out and you put it too thick so you couldn't see the air bubbles, that's where that cloudiness is more likely to be an issue and it won't actually look as transparent because of the, the little inclusions of air within the, the layer. But you know, if you're keeping this product pretty still and you're not letting, you're not shaking it and agitating it for it to be bubbly, you should be fine. Now I'm going to go over, I'm gonna move this off. We'll go over to the next thing, which is the Viscount's Rondel Center thing. We're going to get to painting. Of course, you you couldn't expect possibly for me to do a workshop without some sort of painting. But this is like a really easy, accessible um, painting, uh, painting, super beginner friendly kind of approach. Um, because I wanted I wanted to when I was outlining this this workshop, I wanted to make sure that we had something for people who were really new. They didn't have to feel like they had to buy specialty products for this. Um, and that was really important to me. And so that is where looking at, looking at the really exciting um, game, looking at Viscounts and looking at this beautiful component piece, um, which is like something I was really excited about when it came to, when it came to, there we are. Um, when it came to working with this this thing, I, I know how I know how popular um, and anticipated like Counts of the West Kingdom is, and so this was a game that I was just like, you know, this this is kind of the perfect entry point. If you were like, oh, you know, this might be interesting to try. I'm really interested in maybe painting miniatures. Maybe I just want to like upgrade this. I'm gonna show you some techniques that are really straightforward. So I have this actually in different stages based on the segment. So this is the plastic. We're gonna work from here. We're gonna go, well, I'll we'll probably start from here, honestly. Um, but we're gonna go from here and we're gonna work through, this is the wash stage. This is a basic dry brush and this is the stipple. So if I give you a bit of better focus, you can actually see the difference. So from bare plastic, we're gonna put a wash and that will darken it up, put some shadows in on the edges where the, the plastic areas meet and build that shadow in. I'm going to dry brush. That'll smooth out that wash a little bit, take out any splotchiness that occurs, and it'll give some some more smooth, blended uh, color variation that kind of more closely mimics stone. And then this is stippling, and this is the final finishing touch. If you've ever watched furnished like like home renovation channels. There's always someone who's like, I'm going to paint this fireplace or paint this mantelpiece and make it look like it's marble or something. And they do these faux finishes. This is what we're essentially doing to this game component. We're new faux stone finish to it using, we can use, um, two colors of paint. Uh, you can buy craft paint for this. This is not one where I'm just like, you need to buy hobby paint. Um, thickness doesn't matter. Like the application with the methods that we're using, doesn't matter. Um, I do recommend whenever you put any sort of paint onto plastic though, you prime it. Um, and so what I primed this with, because bare plastic is still visible, uh, I actually primed it with this. This is a hardware store uh, matte paint and primer cover thing. It's matte clear. Um, and this is also a, the same product you can use if you want to spray your shiny game components afterwards you're like oh, you know 
I feel good that they're sleeved and protected, but you won't, you're like the kind of person who has Mac card sleeves and you want to, to have your, your, uh, pour, pouring mediumed, um, plastic laminated, um, sleeved tokens and you want them to have a matte finish, you can give them a spray with this stuff too. All at the hardware store, I think this can cost me 10 bucks. Um, and it goes a long way, especially when you're just painting like maybe one component of a game or a couple things. I also like this product because like a, just a, a matte finish in general, um, because you use this to finish this as well. When you put uh, paint on, on plastic, um, this is a game component. This is something that will get handled. This is something that will get touched. This is something that will get into contact with other game components. You don't want paint to transfer. And so coming in afterwards, you can use this as a primer to, to give the paint something to adhere to on the plastic because the plastic itself isn't, as a surface, a great um, surface finish for paint as a whole to just adhere to. So it works as a primer. But because it's clear, you can use it as a finishing spray as well and give it that one extra layer to ensure the paint stays on the miniature and won't have transfer onto anything else that you have your hands as you handle it and so forth. So I've got, uh, I have got a couple things in terms of equipment. I've got like a little cup of water here uh, and I have my paints. You, again, dollar store paint's totally fine. Uh, I've got black and white because we're gonna do gray. Um, if you have hobby paint, if you have miniature paint, you can use that too. Um, this is dish soap. Always good to have. Um, I just put in a little bottle because uh, it's it's easier for me to store with my paints. But you probably have this at home. Uh, if you don't have it at home, you can use shampoo. You probably have that at home. Um, and if you don't have that, you probably are washing your hands a lot. So you've got hand soap. That works just as well. Any of those things, just something uh, that is a detergent that, that breaks surface tension of water. Uh, and what I'm using as my palette is this is an old coffee can lid. You can use them like a margarine lid. I use whatever I've got. Um, I've seen people use egg cartons as, as cartons. This is my wet palette. So I've got a dry palette here because we're going to be doing dry brushing. Coffee can lid. This is um, what I'm going to be putting like uh, like my wet palette. Like So if I've got liquids, I'm going to mix for the wash specifically. This is specific for the wash. I use this. This used to hold chocolate. You could use egg cartons. Styrofoam egg cartons work great as well. I'm, I'm not about like I don't tend to buy. Um, I'd rather spend my money on games and and not spend money on equipment to to uh, for painting and that sort of thing because there's so much stuff that you can use. So I'm all about that. And all we're gonna do here is I'm gonna start with a wash. So. We're going to make a wash in one of these little cups. Really straightforward. This is super easy. All I'm going to do is going to put like a couple drops of black paint into a little cup. One, two, there it is. Very, very little amount. Um, you might need more if you're going to do the whole thing at the same time. I'm doing a section, so of course that's a little bit less. I'm going to take a brush here. Here's my brush, basic paintbrush, dollar store paintbrush, totally fine. And I'm going to put water into this cup here so it'll it'll it's gonna look soupy and then I'm gonna take a just a tiniest drop of dish soap here so this is let's lift this up and you can kind of see just that tiny tiny bit I'm not even gonna use that much I'm gonna take the corner of my brush just touch it in and that's my dish soap and what that does is it breaks the surface tension of the the wash and so it, instead of clinging to itself, it starts to cling to the sides of the cup. And I can give that a mix. And I'm going to try, what I like to do is I like to experiment, make sure things look kind of good. That looks really thick. That's not a wash. I want it to be more transparent than that. So I'm going to add more water into my, my wash cup and see how does this look. That looks more transparent. So this was, I need more water. This was the version that I'm like, okay, great. Also, you'll notice I didn't paint the bottom of this. Um, I'm going to wipe this off because I'm going to be handling this and I don't want to get ha black paint all over my hands and because I touched my face. And it's just on stream, I'd rather not do that. But I don't paint the bottoms of my miniatures. I don't paint the bottoms of my game components. Nobody will see it. If no one's going to see it, I don't need to, to finish it. So black wash. I'll do this little section here just so you can kind of see um, the process. So this will go with this section. 
Um, and I'm just going to, it's a little bit thick still, so I'm going to put a little more water in there. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to apply it. And it will dry a little bit thinner, but not that much thinner. So what you're seeing, um, what you see that as it applies is, is how it's going to look. Just make that assumption and you'll just be safer. And if you need to add another layer because it's not dark enough, you can do that too. Now, if I was going to try to paint this on um, untreated, like unprimed plastic, I'd you'd, be, you'd notice a lot more clinging of the paint to itself and it wouldn't have as easy a time sticking. And so, so I'm just going to throw this on and that's why we put the primer on, but that's it. That's all it is. And it, this, this step goes really fast. Um, washing is really quick. What is the harder part of washing is actually like ac waiting for it to dry. And it can take a little bit of time. Give it like an hour. What you're looking for, truly what you're looking for, is for this to stop looking shiny. So you can see this is the dry, this is a dry wash layer. This is the wet layer. What you're looking for is when it no longer looks shiny, you're good to go. Um, so that is all that wash layer is. And it's gonna look kind of crazy, okay? Um, I often say that as you paint uh, miniatures, if you're doing any sort of crafting at all, even in the middle of it, when, when you hit a certain point, you're just, you're gonna think, oh my gosh, what happened? Why am I, well, why does this look so bad? And that is normal. That is a normal part of the process. Uh, when you're in the middle of, uh, it's kind of like when you clean your house and there's a stage when you're cleaning your house, maybe it looks a little messier than when you started, uh, as you're reorganizing everything that that's kind of, kind of like what happens when you're, you're doing some crafting, um, with your miniatures and with your board game. So any sort of crafting, you're going to hit that time. Don't worry about it. It will smooth out and will look better. So that's the wash layer. I'm, I would normally just let that dry, but I did, I'm doing this in sections so we can keep moving and you can see the next step of the process. So I've done that. If I made enough wash, you know, this two, two drops of black paint, uh, thinned out very thin. Like this, this is like the consistency of water with a little bit of dish soap. That's my wash. You can use this wash for miniatures as well. It's a really easy way to, to, to put some, some shadows into miniatures. Um, so you don't have to buy expensive washes. But now we're gonna get to dry brushing. This is a really fun part. In order to dry brush, you do need a couple things. You need a brush, you need some paint, you need some paper towel. Always, always have it on hand. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put black and white paint. You can kind of see I have some already here on the sections that I did already. So it makes it a little easier, but again, any surface you want, I'm gonna put a couple drops of black on my palette. You can see that. I don't need too much, you know. Um, I like to work with pea size amounts of paint. If I need more, I can always pull more out. It's hard to put paint back in the bottle once you pull it out. So um, that is the white and the black. And then I'm gonna take a new brush and it is specifically a dry brush, okay? So that's, that's what I'm looking at doing here is I'm gonna take a dry brush and I am going to do what the, the technique is called. It's called dry brushing. Um, so you take your paper towel, dry paper towel, paint, not watered down, dry out of the bottle. And we're going to, on this section here, I'm gonna mix a little bit of paint. I want it to be kind of darker gray. Again, I can test on the bottle of my, my, my component here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a little bit of the black and the white. I'm gonna start with the white. I'm not too worried about contaminating my white. If I was painting miniatures, I would always be more concerned about it because there are always times when I want white. But for this purpose, um, because I'm gonna be constantly blending colors anyways, I'm. it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal to me. So I've got a darker kind of grayish color. It's nearly black. I'm gonna add a little more white to it just so I have just a little more gray tone to it. So that's the color. You can go with whatever gray you want, really. This, at this point, this is on. This is your choice. And from here, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that over to my paper towel. This brush is loaded with paint. This is a like dollar store makeup brush, eyeshadow brush, not a fancy brush, not a special 
hobby brush and I'm going to take most of the paint off. And when it gets to a point where it looks like that on my, my towel, so wipe, 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 wipe until it looks like this is barely on there. Like 95% of that paint is off. I'm going to, to take this here and I'm going to dry brush it. So I'm going to bring the brush across the areas. So you'll notice the wash might be looking a little splotchy. It might look a little bit, so over here it was looking a little spotchy. This will help even that out a little bit. But what that wash does is it sits in the cracks and crevices, especially on these edges here where the, the walls are meeting the kind of the floor area. And that shadow, you kind of want that. It adds a little bit of depth to what's going on above. And I'm going to try to focus on and hit these edges here. So I've got some paint on there to kind of even out the color, just like that. And I'm going to kind of give this like this circular, rubby, blendy thing. This is a little wet. Normally I would, I'm going to just dry that off a little bit. Normally I would recommend, like as with every um, good, good painting habit, before you put your second layer on, you want to make sure your first layer is dry. <laughs> Um, because we're doing this sectioned out, I'm going to, I just wipe the, the wet part off just so I can work around it for this section here, but for demonstration purposes, but this is pretty straightforward and pretty easy. So I've got this nice kind of shadowed shade here. I've got this color in and I'm just going to do it again. Now, the nice thing about dry brushing is as you do it, it's kind of a dry application. It dries right away because it's not like I'm putting a coat of paint on it. Um, so it, it's already dry. Like I'm, I'm kind of pushing nearly dry pigment onto the miniature. It's adhering and like it's drying really fast because it's a super thin layer of barely their pigment. So that means I can build up the layers on it pretty quick. So I'm going to build up a lighter color. So I'm going to add a little more white into the color I mixed earlier for that first layer of dry brushing. I'm going to bring it over to my paper towel, take it off again and do it again. And so this is all I'm doing is I'm just going to kind of focus and add that little bit of white. I'm going to focus on the edges up here, make them look like stone and, and just kind of swirl it out. It, this is just kind of that finish, right? And so this is all I'm doing quick. It goes pretty quick. Once you get dry brushing, especially when you start using a bigger brush, like I'm using a smaller brush because I'm keeping it within a section, but you can go as far as using like a brush twice as big. This is like another makeup brush. This is like a big, big C brush. This is a brush I've used for dry brushing on like big models. This is like a, they say it's a concealer brush. You can actually see it's a makeup brush. Again, available at the dollar store, drug stores, that sort of thing. Don't need fancy. You don't need a fancy brush to do this. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to take that and lighten it up and just, and just put that onto the mini, uh, onto the, the game component here, this, this rondelle. And what I'm going to also do is I'm going to try to hit the top of those castle, castle elements there, because those are kind of catching the light and they will be lighter. I'm going to try to hit the tops here of these areas because those are also catching the light. The hard part is trying to get in, in between this, like this wall here area. Um, so you want, might want to spend a little more time kind of fiddling in there, but as long as it's got some paint on it, it will look really good. So I've got the dry brush done. Now from here, we can go on to the stipple and you can tell from, from this here, to this wash, to this dry brushing, it's already looking more like stone. By the time we get to these two, it looks pretty similar. So really what you're doing is just refining your dry brushing. Um, and so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of that white, add it even more white to that last mixed color. Again, I'm not trying to hit pure white. I'm gonna take that to my, my paper towel, take most of it off, and I'm using the same brush. I'm not cleaning it in between. This is just a, a paint and go kind of technique. Once you've got that wash on, it's paint and go. It's go time. And all I'm going to do here, so from here, I can, I can work across these two sections because they're kind of at the same stage now. I've finished dry brushing across both, is I'm going to just stipple. I'm not doing that circle kind of motion. I'm just stippling 
and breaking up the brush strokes and pushing it in. And this is, um, again, this is something you'll see people turning faux finish countertops and, and that sort of thing. And they're trying to mimic stone. This is all we're doing is we're just kind of kind of capture the inclusions of the stone, add a little texture to it. Um, light catches, uh, light catches on uneven surfaces differently, like the little bumps and the cracks that create shadow and little highlights. And that's what we're kind of faking with this here at this scale, right? As a castle scale, as a fortress scale, those little specs we're adding on by, by stippling on. This is what this technique is, a little bit of stippling. Um, again, a little bit of, it's kind of on the lightest side of the grays. Um, using the dirty brush, which kind of carries a little bit of that pigment in so it evens it out and blends it better. All we're doing is adding these, these stipples in to create that texture of finished stone. And what that does, again, is it, it makes it look more textured. And and that's all we're trying to do. If you, you find that, you know, you can you can kind of mix this in, but you're working your way from dark to light as you do this. So I started with a kind of darker layer. I mixed a little more white in. I dry brushed that lighter color on. And now I'm stippling with a very kind of the lightest gray to and blending everything together like this. And I'm also doing a little bit of like tiny strokes over this way to catch those little edges. There we are. And it did take long. It did not take long. Um, we did a little section. I could probably do this whole thing um, very quickly, but hey, let's turn off the autofocus a bit. So here's where we started, plain plastic. Here's what the wash looks like. It's still drying. So, but you, you kind of get a sense of just splotchiness and whatever. What we're trying to get is that see where that wash is settling in the corner there that's what we're trying to capture is that wash because we're going to cover off anything else that isn't like ideal with the dry brushing and then we go over and once we've done that this is what that looks like a little bit fancier a little bit more than just plain plastic so if you're looking at doing something like this you're not interested in you're not like you know i'm not really into um, painting miniatures, if you're color blind, if you're color vision deficient, or color blind, um, and you're just like, ah, you know, the colors set me off. Seeing values and working with values is really fun. And I, you know, as a miniature painter, I am always looking at ways to like incorporate better, uh, light, dark elements into my, my miniature painting and my hobby. And this is one way to kind of start doing that. Whether or not you can see color, you can still get to painting and putting paint on your game components and make them look a little bit fancier. So plain plastic, finished castle. That is the workshop. We've hit a lot of things today. Today we talked a little bit about using Sharpies to you know, personalize our meeples. We put some paint on some game components to, to make them a little bit fancier, give them a little more texture and make them look a little less like plain plastic and dress them up a little bit. We talked and showed off a little bit about, you know, fake sleeving, but sleeving nonetheless, your cardboard tokens and finishing them off so they look like they're plastic and fancy. Um, if you have questions, I'm gonna hang out a little bit longer here uh, in chat after the stream ends, but that's pretty much it. If you're still hanging around, thank you so much for uh, joining us for Renegade Con. I really do hope you are checking out the other programming. There's a lot happening this weekend. Um, there's still stuff happening right now. So there's more going on. I'm going to be moderating a panel very shortly, um, next in the, starting in an hour for Vampire the Masquerade, Rivals Expandable Card Game, where I'll be joined by the people who are designing the game, not just mechanically, but also visually. Uh, so that's gonna be really exciting. And um, we're gonna talk about Vampire the Masquerade Rivals. And there's still lots of other things happening, so check that out. Their demo's still going on. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the con. Have a good one.